Hi, this is Shelley Physics, last part on impulse momentum and conservation of energy. We're looking at two-dimensional collisions today. In this kind of two-dimensional collision scenario, we've got one mass over here. We've got a second mass hanging out over here. Now, you can think of these like pool balls, playing pool on a table, pool table. Um, now, in pool, all of the balls are of the same mass. So in this particular scenario, I'm just going to call them all M. This would be with two objects of equal mass colliding. Now the key concept here is conservation of momentum. But remember that momentum is a vector and momentum is conserved in both the horizontal and vertical and every direction. So if we simplify this situation by separating the horizontal momentum of the system and the vertical momentum of the system, then we can easily solve this. So that's the angle, <laughs> no pun intended, that we're going to attack this at. We're going to look at momentum in that X direction and the momentum in the Y direction, both directions. All right, so I need to give a few knowns here, known pieces of information. So with this pool ball at a nice eight meters per second of speed, it's going along the table, it's gonna collide with the number one ball. So this is like the cue ball, and oh, sorry, this would be the three ball, it's red. And they all have about the same mass. Now the mass is not eight meters per second. The velocity of mass one, its initial velocity is eight meters per second. Okay. And now uh, one, one thing that uh, experienced pool players will know that when you uh, run the cue ball into one of the object balls, it tends to go off at a 90 degree angle from, from one another. So if this angle right here from the original direction of motion is 30 degrees, that would make this angle down here 60 degrees or just about. Now you can put top spin on it to uh, get it to come a little bit this way or back spin on it to get a little bit to go this way. Um, that's just a little trick of the trade. All right, so uh, if you wanted to fall forward to the intended path or back behind it. But uh, anyway, we've got about a 90 degree angle here. Now, don't get this stuck in your head because this is true for when masses are equal, just like in pull. But uh, another scenario we'll look at in just a moment, we'll look at where masses are not equal and that little angle rule is, is not really in effect there. Um, so don't always assume the angle, go with what you're given. Uh, we have the angles and we have the masses. We have the initial velocity of the cue ball. So what we're going to find out is the final velocity of that second ball and the final velocity of the cue ball. So what's the velocity of the three ball and the cue ball after the collision? All right, so in the x direction, we're thinking about initial momentum in the x direction being final, being equal to the final momentum in the x direction. This is for the system. So what's involved? We've got mass of the, the cue ball, ball number one, and times its velocity, it's the momentum. And we got the momentum of the second ball. Now, that second ball is going to have an initial momentum of zero. That's something I didn't really define here, but uh, that's a kind of a given and pull that all the object balls are at rest to begin with. And afterwards, this is going to be an elastic collision. So afterwards, we might have a final momentum of the cue ball and the final momentum of the three ball or that second object ball. Same kind of thing in the y, y direction. Initial momentum in the y direction should equal the final momentum in the y direction. So here, the uh, cue ball is not starting with any vertical motion to begin with. It has no momentum in this y direction. And the uh, uh, the three ball is also not moving at all. It's at rest. The actual, the, the momentum of the system to begin with in the y direction is zero. Whereas uh, in the x direction, there's only momentum in the system from the cue ball to begin with. Everything, all this velocity is to the right. It's in that positive x direction, if you will. And there's no mo momentum in the y direction. So what do we see here? We see all the momentum of the system to begin with in this x direction, they collide. And then they're going off at these two angles, which means there's still going to be momentum in the x direction, but now there's going to be some momentum in the y direction from the, the three ball, the red one, and in the negative y direction from the cue ball. 
So as you see with a with a positive y and a negative y direction of momentum, you can still get a net zero momentum in that y direction to match the zero momentum of the system to begin with. So this is still going to work. That's the angle we're going to approach this at. Now all these are, of course, uh, x directions up here. So I should be very specific since I'm getting all of them included. And here we'd have the, the y direction. Let's not uh, confuse things here. All right, in the y direction, we had momentum of the first ball in the y direction, which of course is zero. You get another zero from that second ball. And afterwards, P1 final y plus P2 final y. Let's keep them all identified correctly here. All right, so this is this is the concept, the big concept here. This is what's going on in the back of your mind when you're looking at a, a collision with conservation momentum. So let's now take this first, first expression and come up with something useful. We're going to be substituting P and MV. We're going to substitute MV for every P into these two expressions. So let's think about it in the x direction. We've got a mass one and a velocity one. That's its initial momentum in the x direction. And how about the momentum of the second ball? It's it's at rest here to begin with. So you could plug in a, an m2 v2, but v2 is zero. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill in a zero for that second momentum initially. And after the collision, all right, what's going on here? Well, we're gonna have a, an mv for this here. Okay, it's a mass one, velocity one final. But take a note here that it's the x direction, it's the x component of that, which means this velocity will have a cosine of 30 degrees, the horizontal component of, well, I guess it'd be this one down here, of the cue ball, the horizontal component is this much, while its vertical component is this much, if that were the velocity. So we look at the, the angle here, it, it touches this vector. So I had my two vectors confused just a moment ago. Um, so I'm gonna correct that error. This should be a cosine of 60 degrees there. And that'll agree with uh, ball number one is going down and to the right, but it has a right-hand component. So what's that velocity gonna be? A V1 cosine of 60 is gonna be the horizontal co component of that velocity. And also, we're going to have a mass 2. And um, a velocity 2, v2 final. Now its component would be the cosine 30. It's going to the right and up. Now I'm not sure exactly how long these vectors are. This is just my sketch. We'll see if this one is in fact greater than that one. All right, now we can do a little bit of simplifying here. Like I said before, all the masses are the same. So let's just uh, rewrite this mv1 instead of m1. And we'll have over here mv1 final cos 60 plus m2 v2 final cos 30. All right, that's one we're gonna work with. Uh, you've seen m in all these, oops. Let's back that up again. I'm trying to simplify this. So we don't want M2, we want M, V2 final, cos 30. All right, so we're gonna be able to cancel out an M from all these. If we divide both sides by M, all those M terms cancel. All right, so we have an expression here. We don't, we know what uh, the V1 is. It's gonna be eight, but we don't want to know what the two final velocities are. So we'll figure those out in a moment. Let's add some more space here and look at the Y direction. When you get stuck, don't stop, just keep going. And that y direction, we're, the initial y direction of momentum, or the initial y velocity of this mass one is zero. It's not moving up or down. So for our second expression here, we're gonna start with a zero. And how about that second object, the second object ball, number th um, the three ball? It's going to have zero momentum also. It's not moving at all. So it has zero momentum in the y direction before the collision. After the collision, the momentum of the cue ball is going to be m 
V1 final sine of 60 degrees. So it's coming down here. But do notice here, um, I should take this into account before, this is a negative 60 degrees, and it does matter to the sine. If we put a negative cosine up here, a uh, cosine of a negative is the same as the cosine of a positive when you're dealing with angles less than 90. So uh, when I was looking at that, my brain wasn't really taking that into account. But we'll notice in here, this, this sign of a negative angle will give us a negative term here. This is indicating that the velocity is downward as opposed to an upward kind of velocity. So we'll, we'll come back to that in a moment. And then we're going to add on an uh, momentum of the second object here mv2 final and we're gonna have a sine of positive 30 degrees there all right so these are our two equations we can work with here we uh, can plug in uh, the initial velocity of the cue ball was eight meters per second and we got a, a, a v1f now cosine of 60 is the same as um, cosine of negative 60, which is the same as sine 30. And if you know what those are, it's one half. So we're going to have a 0.5 here. Cosine of negative 60 degrees is one half. And also over here, we're going to have a V2F cosine 30. I am not recalling at the moment what cosine 30 is. I'm a little bit out of it. Cos 30. Cos 30, which is 0.866 or thereabouts. Okay, we can't uh, do anything there yet. You get stuck, don't stop. We're down here at the bottom, zero equals. Oh, we got these masses. Remember if we divide zero by M and all these terms by M, they do cancel out in this particular problem. And uh, sine 60 is gonna be the same as cosine 30, but this, with a negative on there, this will be a negative V1F times 0.866, or V1F times negative 0.866, plus V2F sine 30, which is one half V2F. All right, a little more space here. Now we've got a system of equations, two equations with two unknowns, and we're ready to solve. This is what the end game is going to be for all of these conservation of momentum and two dimension kind of scenarios. If we add this term to both sides, we're going to have a 0.866 V2 or V1F equals a 0.5 V2F, V2 final. And we're dividing both sides by half. So we get the final velocity of the second object, the, uh, the three ball, being 0.866 divided by 0.5. I'm going to turn on my calculator and 0.866 divided by 0.5 gives us a 1.73. So that's 1.73 V1F, V1 final. All right, so we're going to take this piece here and substitute. We're solving by substitution. Substitute in for V2F right up there. I'll do the, the equations, do the talking here. So now I'm going to take this creature here and we're going to continue. 8 equals v1 final times a half plus instead of v2 final, we're going to plug in a 1.73 v1f times 0.866. All right, we have two v1f terms. We're going to add them all up. So this is going to be 1.73 times uh, 0.866. And we're going to add on the one half because we're adding the V1F terms. So add on a half VF. That's 1.9999. That looks like a 2 to me. Equals V1F times 2. And we have a solution for our V1 final is four meters per second. There's one of them. And now we're going to plug it in right up here. So V2 final 
is 1.73 times 4. 1.73 times 4. 6.92. What we should see is because the cue ball gave some of its momentum to the uh, three ball, um, it's going to slow down a bit, and that's what we see here. It slowed down by half, and it gave the other ball momentum. Now it has momentum in both the x and the y direction now, so they're both moving less than eight, but uh, some kind of fraction of the original speed. So that's our first example. What about our second one? What if one of those objects is larger? Now in this one, I'm going to go for a slightly different outcome. Uh, Let's give us a, we'll start with a mass of two kilograms. So these are not obviously pool balls anymore. These are just, um, this could be asteroids out in space, okay? We have a two kilogram, small little tiny, I guess this wouldn't be an asteroid, this would be more like a, I guess there could be a small asteroid like that. Anyway, it's gonna hit a larger one, mass of eight kilograms. We'll call those mass one and mass two. V1 initial, we'll get it, uh, we're out in space. Let's go 20 meters per second, something bigger here. So we have the initial conditions of this. And let's say our final velocity of the second one we measure to be um, let's go with, is that 20? Let's go with uh, four meters per second at an angle of 20 degrees, something not so easy to work out this time. And finally, what would be the final velocity of this chunk and its angle? And so we have some, a few, three, few different unknowns. We're really gonna approach this, this <laughs> we're really gonna approach this the same exact way as the other one, okay? So we're gonna start out with M1, V1, plus zero. And uh, what I am looking at here is the x direction, okay? Horizontal direction here, m1, v1. And there's zero momentum in the x direction from mass two to start with. Afterwards, mass one will have a final velocity. And let's say that that's, that's the one we're looking for. So is this gonna be a v1 cosine theta? The horizontal component of this is v1 f cosine theta. These are the two pieces that we don't know yet. And also we're going to have this piece up here, the larger chunk, mass 2, moving with a velocity of V2F cosine, and I know that angle, 20 degrees. I do have some numbers to plug in here, so I'm going to go ahead and do that, make this less mysterious looking, and figure out what exactly we have in front of us. So that's going to be 2 kilograms times 20 is the initial x momentum of object one. Object one's mass is two, but we don't know its final velocity, v1f, or its angle. Added on to that, we do have the mass two's eight kilograms. We've been at a velocity, final velocity of four meters per second. And we've got a cosine 20 tacked on there. So this is a equation with two unknowns. That means we're kind of stuck. Uh, I can simplify this a little bit, divide each term by two. That would leave a, a four there. Let's get rid of some of that stuff. But after this step, I'm gonna have to, gonna have to move on. And four times four is 16 cosine 20. Let's go ahead and get that in there. 16 cos 20. 15. All right, we're stuck. Let's not stop. Let's look at the y direction. In the y direction, I have zero momentum from mass one. I've got zero momentum from mass two to start with. It also has a, I didn't note it here earlier, but its initial velocity is zero. So there's zero plus zero. There's zero y momentum to begin with of the system. Afterwards, we got v1, we got mass one coming down this way. So we got mass one is two times V1F and its 
its y component is a sine of negative theta, okay, whatever that angle is in there. And we're going to add to that. 8 is the mass times V2 is 4 sine 20 degrees. There's its y direction momentum. Simplify a little bit. 0 equals. I'm going to bring this negative out of the sign just to make it a little easier to, to solve. 2V1 final sine theta plus this will be 8 times 4 is 32. So 32 sine 20. 10.94. Just leave it as 10.9. There it is. Okay, two equations with two unknowns. When you're dealing with an angle, um, especially with one equation with a sine and the other one a cosine, it's always good to remember that identity that sine divided by cosine is the same as tangent of an angle. So I'm going to solve for V1 final in terms of sine of theta. And plugging that in there, we should get something that we can work with. So add, uh, add this term to both sides. I'm going to have a 2 V1 final sine theta. Cancel it on this side. We add it to this side. Equals 10.9. The rest is math here. We're going to divide both sides by 2 sine theta. And we got a V1 final in terms of sine theta is 10.9 uh, divided by 2 would be a 5.45 over sine theta. This is the term we're going to plug in up here. Remember our x direction momentum? I'm just going to bring this down, uh, down here a little bit. 20 times V1 final, we're going to substitute in a 5.45 divided by sine theta times the cosine theta plus 15. Subtract 15 on both sides. It leaves us with 5 over here. It's a funky 5. Still a funky 5. Okay, still got some funk in there. All right. But here we've got a 5.45. And I'm just going to kind of bring this out to the outside. Cosine theta over sine theta. All right, so that would be the cotangent. Um, but I like writing this 5.45 divided by tangent is another way to do that. So we'll rewrite that. Okay, sine over cosine is tangent theta, so cosine over sine theta would be the inverse of tangent theta. You could also call it the cotangent. Uh, multiply both sides by tan theta, brings it to the top, cancels out on that side, divide both sides by five, divide it by five in there. Now we get a tangent all by its lonesome equals 5.45 Divided by 5, a little over 1, 1.09. We're going to take the arc tangent, 1.09. That'll be our theta. Forty-seven point five degrees. Got the angle. Now we can solve for V1 final. It's so refreshing once you get that first step because the second one is so easy to solve. 47.5. We have our speed. 5.45 divided by sine. 47.5. 7.39. 7.39. Meters per second. There it is. We have it. So seven. Let's see if this makes sense. Seven point three nine and forty-seven and a half. All 
All right, it had a lot of speed to, to start with, 20 meters per second. And this other chunker over here was uh, four times its mass, four times the mass of the original one. And it's moving at about one-fifth the speed of the original. Now, if you look at this, though, since it's got four times the mass, that means that that four meters per second is, is a lot of momentum here. We're starting out with 40 kilograms meters per second of momentum. And uh, this, this big piece here has eight times four is 32 kilograms meters per second of momentum. So um, a lot of that momentum from the from the ball got transferred to the, the larger object. I said call it a ball, it's fine. This is conservation momentum in two dimensions. It's uh, basically just a big algebra bath. Once you get everything set up, and the same goes with, for, for all of conservation momentum. You're just dealing with masses and velocities, get your signs right, get your angles right. That's the hardest part about this. But the more practice you're gonna get, uh, the more practice you get, the better you're gonna get. <laughs> Take care, I hope this is helpful. Shut up and sit down.